Good morning, everybody. This is Jason Meyer, and welcome to Morning Jumpstart. Um, today, with a little luck, we're going to look at um, some four value compositional studies. Uh, some oil rub out and color studies. But there seems to be a little snafu for some reason. My computer will not recognize my iPad, which is where all of this magic happens. So, we're gonna see if we can't chit chat here for just a second and pray to the technology gods. See if something doesn't happen. So in the meantime, let's see, Miss Janney, how are you, my friend? How are you? All right, let's give this one more go. Hmm, it does not like my iPad this morning. So I'm gonna try one more reset before we might have to do something else or postpone this. Let's see, we're gonna include that there. So close, so close. Let's see here. Okay guys, so it looks like the feedback might be off today for the iPad. Now what's going on with my cameras? It seems like this may be, let me see, let's try one more thing here. We got one more option. One more option. All right, well I'm back. I'm back. Let's try this. <laughs> they are being fussy today for sure. For sure, for sure. So, good morning, Susan. We're having some technological uh, difficulties this morning. So, I'm doing a little song and dance and seeing if we can't pull this thing together before we just have to send everybody to the studio. So let's see here, what if we went? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it just does not like my iPad today. So it looks like the iPad is out, guys. The iPad is out. So there's one more option. If we can send this over or share a screen, then we could at least talk about these things. So let's try that out. Hey, and we can do that. So that's something. That is something, and we'll take it. Okay, so we've got a baseball cap here, and we're going to take a look at that for the four value compositional study. And very good. I love that you've got distinct tones here. I clearly see the tone of the paper, or that may be white paper. You might not have tone paper yet. The white paper, and then I see one value of gray, two value of gray and then a dark. So that is exactly how I'm asking you to approach these with big solid masses. So as we go forward on this one, what I'd like to like you to try to do is see if we can't get some of these tones a little more even. Okay, and what that means is you see how there's dark and then there's kind of a light spot and then it's a little bit gray and then we go a little darker and then it's light. I wanna see if I can't get that more into a single family. Okay, so I think that would be the 
next step there there's a couple of drawing things but without the iPad um, it's gonna be a little tough to show you that so let's just keep with uh, evening out our tones for right now okay and then let's see how we go from there all right Shakti made it good morning good morning so if you're just making it onto the broadcast we're having a little technological difficulties the program doesn't seem to want to recognize the iPad this morning so we're just gonna have to run through the photos and talk about some photos all right for our second one we have um, the four value compositional of E <clears throat> and uh, very good again we've got big even pieces here which I really really like that dark is all holding together as a single piece very 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 good um, what I would do next is this will be more effective if you show the shadow on this side of his face I know it's not showing up in the reference very strong but go ahead and clearly divide your light from your dark and that could happen with the eye too. show that that eye wraps around so if something's spherical like that then the part that is away from the light will have shadow okay and we've got a little bit of that but even in here these are that turns around that'll be dark in there let that be a little bit dark um, and then the other thing is if we would finish off to the edge basically take all of this light out of here make it more of that tone and then just slightly darker in the background boom that's gonna be singing okay so I hope that helps out on that one okay man sue you are just killing it you're nailing it you're nailing it i love these she did both an oil rub out and a color study so in the oil rub out here i th i think you're right on um again the background's probably a little bit close because we want this to clearly separate out you can do that with color more than value but what I do like about this is the simplicity of this. It seems like everything's either light or dark. Now there's some variations between the light and stuff, but that simplicity makes for a very strong image. Very strong image. Um, good, 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 good. A again, for me, my taste, I would just, the background slightly darker and um, you know maybe show some of the shadow a little especially here in the eye don't think just think about the eye but that's sitting in a bigger form so all of those forms right there will be in shadow okay and then the same on this side too I know we're highlighting the eye but behind that glass look that's the shadow side so make sure we get the sense of that right it's a real boy with real eyes that turn around that turn around so great job, great job, great job. Oh, that is beautiful, Sue. That is beautiful. And Cindy made it. Good morning, babe. We're having some procreate difficulties, so we're just able to go through the photos this morning. All right, so there's Sue's rub out. And let's see. Um... The color study, Sue's color study. So again, very good. And now with the red in here, this is being more effective. Again, slightly darker back there. It, it, it's just a touch, just a touch. But yes, 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 and yes, Sue. Yes, yes. I see some unfinished canvas here that looks it looks a little wrong, but if in my imagination I spread that color here over those, man, this feels better, better, better. So I think you're you're right on. You're right on. And the next level is gonna be if we can get light and dark in this hoodie that he's wearing. I know it's a dark hoodie, 
but can we get a shadow side and a light side and still keep this all dark? Okay, the key to that is gonna make the shadow side warmer. So maybe think ivory black and a little bit of cad red. And then where this is cooler, think ivory black and just a little bit of white. And that'll set up that nice light versus shadow. And then you'll get a little more oomph out of this sweater. But great, Sue, great, great, great. Janie, was that your drawing, Janie? I, I, I put these together so late last night and I was so tired that that looks like that might be, be yours. So if that was yours, thank you. And if this is yours and you're here, let me know um, if I miss you. So this is Susan. This is Susan. I forget what order these are in. They're kind of out of order. <laughs> yeah, he's the international man of mystery, I think, huh? The international man of mystery. Um, great job, great job. Um, can everybody see how you have no choice but to this is what we're looking for here? absolutely no choice and that's what we want from here what we want to do is make sure it's not too intense and well what do i mean by too intense well have you ever you know or you had friends you remember young love right you first fell in love you wanted to hold hands all the time Right? Well, that can go overboard. Right? It, it's really nice to hold hands. But what if that hand turned into a chokehold? And the guy or the woman's just dragging you around everywhere. Well, that's no fun. And if we hold them too tight somewhere, it can almost be like a chokehold. So the question is, what do we do next? Um, and you had asked about a couple of things in here part of it's letting go and part of that letting go is our black doesn't seem to have any form right so as we add form to that black that's going to work out and again all that is is making a little darker and warmer for example ivory black and cad red or um for the shadow so warm shadow and then for the black and light, or the dark and light, what we're gonna do on this particular painting and that with this palette is use ivory black with just a little bit of white. The value can lighten just a little bit. We don't want to lighten a lot, but it's more that temperature change. It's a slight value change, but mostly a temperature change from that warm shadow to that cool light. Okay, and so that'll help like with the mask and here. And then even on the glasses, we can slightly show that and on the eyebrows. Okay, and I know that was some along with the hair, right? By just lightening that up a little bit. And then the other thing that can help is it looks like we go from like the black hair in shadow to the skin in light. And one way that we can make this a little smoother is get slightly separate the skin shadow. I know I told you guys to group it before, but once we're strong and solid like this, now we're just gonna release a little bit. So by adding like a cast shadow on the skin, which would be maybe a warmer shadow, slightly lighter, that'll soften that edge up. Okay, you've got that nice non-color in here. But one thing that'll really do it is if we add just a little more red in the shadows to get a little bit of life in all of them, separate our light from our shadow. It, again, on in the painting, it may happen. If you've already got this happening in the painting, kudos. Sometimes on photographs, they, they don't read values as well. So, um, again, everything with a grain of salt. Because I, I do, seems like I can see some darker 
and they look like warmer things, just make sure that shadow holds as a whole there. And then the last thing we can do is that background looks pure gray. And you saw me do this um, with my color study yesterday. And I believe you turned this in before you saw yesterday's color study. So you may already be well aware of this. But now if we just start adding a little yellow ochre back here, we want it gray, we don't want this, uh, but that gray yellow will bridge the gap between that. Okay, and then again, all of that will get to be better. So great, great, great. A little more form on the black. Um, we're gonna warm our shadows up a little bit and the skin tone, we maybe even warm those up a little bit more, right? It's just a slight slide from the dark, dark. We don't want a big step. We're, we'll just slide a little bit lighter, right? You can almost think if you're hitting a note with an instrument and as you fall off that note, fall off instead of ending. Okay, and so that's the feeling you want to look for when you look at that. All right, let's see what we have here. Really nice, Susan. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. So you guys are doing such a great job. You're going to be so pro. Hi, Sue. Um, I don't know if you were here, but we did yours a little bit earlier, so you can watch the rewind. But great job, great job. Strong composition. Yeah, you feel if you get these things placed right, and if you remember, I spent a good amount of time in the color study finding the placement, but not the, we want the drawing of him complete, but if this is what we see, it's important where, where we put that on the canvas. Pardon me, so good. Janie says the charcoal was mine. All right, great job, Janie. Great job. You guys are doing a lot of work. So good. So good, so good, so good. Right, baby? Look at how great everybody's getting. Mm. The shadow nose. I love it. So she says she was going to call the painting the shadow nose. Ooh. <laughs> Man, I think you're somewhat of a master storyteller, Susan. You may be a master visual storyteller. I'm not so, I don't know what to say. Good job. So I hope those comments helped a little bit. Again, for anybody coming in late, um, having some technological difficulties with the iPad um, showing up on screen. So I'm just doing a verbal critique with photos this morning. All right. And then, yeah, since, uh, Everything happened so late last night, we didn't get to notify anybody. Um, Cindy will be sending out emails with the links for everybody that uh, we work on today. Okay. You, so, um, can I take this moment? Can we take just a little break? Man, we're doing a lot of work really fast, but let's take a little break. How do I do that? Let's do that. So, how about a little public service announcement, huh? Don't let your brushes dry out. When you work, just clean them up. I had to spend nearly two hours last night cleaning brushes. Not because I'd used 57 brushes that day, but because I hadn't cleaned brushes in like four days. And then that little brush that should take three minutes to get cleaned out and washed off, now takes 18 minutes to let it sit in some Gamasol and break it up and then sit it in some Murphy's Oil Soap and break it up and then work it. Clean your brushes. You're welcome. I'm glad. I'm sure you guys know that. I'm sure you guys know that. But that is one of the reasons we were so late today. Because I did not do good brush hygiene. And I got stuck at the sink for a couple of hours. So, but enough about me. Let's go back to the artwork. Let's go back to the artwork. So it looks like we might have kind of a short morning. Got a couple more to do. Yeah, Sue says on uh, Susan's such good expression, right? So it really matters that the, the things we're talking about are the big structures that hold 
that hold together right but the little detail of the eye how is this different from right I mean Susan's a free little soul look at all the liberty she's taking liberty what do you mean she's this kid isn't looking like that he's looking over there but notice just this one change from him looking over there to looking directly at you that's enough to completely change the painting right and as you become aware of those little things then you you'll truly have more and more power over the composition so and Susan has a, just has a knack for doing that I call it a knack a lot of times we think people have knacks and they worked very hard over many years to get it but um but yeah 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 it all matters it all matters good job Susan good job now Tom's got four I think each of these equal five by seven inches so they're very small he's done some little oil rub outs now he's getting to the color study too and uh, I don't know if it's what's it's small but things are looking a little dirty to me here why is that in the color study things are looking just a little dirty why is that Tom let's see if we can figure that out let's see if we can figure that out and again it may be the photo so if the photo is different right if the, these are overexposed maybe they're darker and richer and so it doesn't really look like this but from what I can see on the photo it looks like our shadows have white in them that we got some gray in them is probably what happened um, either there was gray on the brush from these other places or um, you know I don't know or else you were trying to lighten that up a little bit and with a small palette it can seem harder but we want to try to leave all white out of the shadows and there's you know there's some places where it's obviously it is but in the other places like if we had a hard edge here on the mask this hard edge is going to do more for this color than anything you could do inside here okay and then the same here by not having by having white in the shadow it, it it kills the shadow and kind of the sense of color okay so try that because this should look okay there's some white in here again I think if we had a little harder cleaner edge that's gonna help to it's amazing but you see this jagged edge right here if I was to come with the same color and just boom give it a, a nice solid edge this instantly is gonna look like a richer color you know just like value edge has so much to do with how a color looks okay and then part of what's happening here and this is really small so it's hard but look we're going from the neck to the collar of the shirt down the shoulder with a straight line so we all know what that does, right? That that kills the structure. We've got to show the sh neck is coming down and then we have a shadow back here. And then from around the neck, the collar comes this way. Then we're gonna drop down, right? And then we're gonna go over for the shoulder. So those, those are, you know, even on these color studies, see if we can't get that right. And for you guys that are more advanced, i.e. Tom, um, you can do this drawing with a brush stroke. So if we're real small down here, I want to think the neck, where is the center of the neck, what's the directions it's going, then I'm going to, boom, lay that brush stroke down that way. And then if it's got to turn back, I'm going to lay this brush work down that way right and so 
again, it's just taking that idea of sculpting to the next level. And this is really how I, I'm, you know, I'm cutting that. And then I'm cutting that away. And let uh, cut out. Let's cut down. Let's... Okay, and it's easy to get... Oh, I'm just going to put some color here. But what you don't realize is that then each of these plane changes, we're going to have to show in color. And when we do that appropriately, the color looks better brighter okay so I think that's some of the reason we've lost kind of the sense of color in here um, is because of some of the lack of definite edges right and the lack of definite changes in a logical order okay so what does a logical order mean well if we're blanched out over here what happens between blanched and gray and shadow? And this is important because this is called a color study. And what happens between blanched and gray is the color. And that's the piece that's missing. Okay, so now it's not that the color won't have any white in it at all, but it's gonna be dark enough, even with the white in it, that a highlight will stand up on it. All right? Like, I think some strong color would work right there. And I see we touched on it, but bigger, flatter with that right there on the collar. You see that? That's tiny. Yeah, I see that. I see color. I see blanched. I see color. I see gray. And then we kind of go to shadow, but we never commit to shadow. So what happened here is we're being a little non-committal. Okay, in a logical way. Again, see what happens if you take a brush stroke right across. And again, you don't have to go from the collar down to the shoulder, but pick a spot. And what if we hit a good edge, right? What does that do to the look? I think that might surprise you. It might surprise you. Okay, um, and then... Again, I, I have a feeling this is the photograph, so I hesitate to say this, but in the photograph, these to me are looking a little blanched out, right? So we may have to go a little darker, richer in these colors. Again, so that a highlight will show up here. And then when we got to the background here, um, this might have been done before the demo yesterday too, um, we need to add some color back here. Uh, not this much color, but rather than being, this looks almost pure black and white, we need to add some yellow, some red, maybe some yellow and red. I don't know. And then I see a little bit of green in these trees, but maybe we could even get a little stronger green there. Not as strong as anything here, and the color back here will influence and change how this looks. Okay. And I th basically the same thing over here. Um, we just weren't quite distinct enough. Now we've got blanched and color here, right? We're, we're going for it, but edges matter, edges, matter and I think we've got too much blanched and then we've got blanched right next to shadow with a hard edge and I know it may sound like I'm being really harsh here but sometimes you get to this level and you're like well I think I'm doing it all but what's happening what's happening and it's some of these little bitty things okay again what's happening here is we've got color but everybody knows what should be here. What should be in this spot? 
right as the light's about to turn into shadow, we don't get color, we get air. Right? So, um, so think about that a little more and then think about our soft edges versus our hard edges. That'll make a, that'll make a big deal too. Right? And especially when our values are going to be so close between our dark and our light, we've got to keep the shadow especially really flat. And just looking at this, I feel quite a bit of white in here. All right, so how flat can we get all of this shadow? All right, and if we do, then what happens is we don't have to go so light to make it seem like light down here, all right? But if this doesn't carry as a big solid dark because there's a little gray or something in there, then what happens is we have to end up pushing everything harder and harder and harder. If the room's filled with mu noise and music and everything, and then I want to talk, I've got to yell over everybody and everybody, they still can't even hear what I'm saying. But if we hush the room, this will be hushing the room, making this all flat, nothing to see, no change then I don't have to speak so loud to be heard. Okay, so that's the idea there. That's the idea there. So I think overall, um, we're doing good, uh, but some of our color relationships are a little bit off. Probably what's happening here, and this is my guess, is this is probably a, a first pass for Tom. He's throwing some up there, then he's gonna have to come back. That's not unlike how I do. I try to get things set in there and then I can look and go, oh, wow, man, these are way off. Okay, so now let's reset these. But I'm not coming in this time from nowhere. Oh, well, we've got all of this set up. Now we've just got to straighten some chairs, maybe vacuum. We don't have to build the house. Okay, and so the second pass, that's what you're going to do is clean that up, right? Try to find all of that solid, dark, with no white in it. All right, let's see. Wow, that is pretty deep there. That's pretty deep. Shakti says, I'm really thinking a lot about beauty, the difference between competence and beauty. That's a great distinction right there. I'd, I'd actually never thought about it quite in those terms, I don't think. Competence versus beauty. Yeah, you know, th there's this uh, quote unquote exactness, which is, by the way, a completely preconceived idea. And then there's beauty, which as you can see, it just leaves me speechless. I mean, beauty, to me, beauty is the act of stunning you. What does it mean to be stunned? It means you're overwhelmed, that you've lost yourself. And that can come in so many ways, right? But the old masters, you know, they weren't idiots. Right? All these things are, are, are based on certain truths and paint just simply works in a certain way, right? But it all comes down to what you're looking for. And most of us think that artists, we can be an artist by being, as Shakti put it, competent. And of course there's a certain level of competence required. But that has very little to do with art, very little to do with beauty, with being stunned. If you're open, you can be stunned by sunlight across the grass, by somebody's fit. I mean, you can literally be stunned by anything. 
the artist's job is to paint or draw something that will stun people. Stunning somebody doesn't feel fill somebody with ego and pride. When somebody's stunned, they're completely dissolved. They're disappeared. So the work of art is just the doorway, the tunnel for what we're actually trying to show them. Right? Your canvas, your paper should simply be a doorway where people are stunned. And then the rest is up to them. All right. Wow. That, you got me going all kinds of directions, Shakti. Yes. Very well said. Very well said. So much of beauty is the state of grace uh, that inspires us. So I also see the beauty in the search. Yes, it's all a search, don't you think? Jeez. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, it, the search is, you know, one of the most beautiful things that really brought, brought it home to me is I think it's in the very end or maybe the beginning, but I believe it's the end of uh, David LaFell's book. And it reads that, the end is in in sight. I can see it. The end, I can see the end. The end is in sight should read the end is in sight. And the insight here, what are you looking for? Right? What are you thinking about? What are you trying? Competence is something, but it's not the goal. Right? So we train for competence, but our intention, our beauty, our vision, our gaze, our perspective has to be one of beauty, no matter the subject matter. And that's how you start, stop doing paintings or covering boards with paint and begin to really create art, right? Beauty, something that'll stun somebody. So last little point here, probably nobody can follow this or just a few. You can only paint what you can see and you can only see what you're looking for right and you can kind of only see what you are so on another level you have to be what you're painting when you're painting air you have to be air when you're painting solid you have to be solid when you're painting movement be movement so if you want to paint something that stuns people yeah you have to be stunned we'll let Shakti in the show right there so may you be stunned may it be so all right guys well considering we had a broken connection with the iPad today I felt like it was a pretty good show and uh, I hope you guys did too. I wanted to come back. Uh, Susan had said eyes are her favorite thing. Yeah, so what are those eyes looking for, Susan? What are those eyes looking for? And the glove. I know there's a lot of questions about this. Um, I'm not very good at drawing, so this is a robotic hand that assists me. No. This keeps my oils from my hand off of my iPad, so it draws better. And um, that's all that is. It's just um, so I don't muck up my iPad when I'm working on it. All right. 
Everybody, I love you so much. Thank you. Go get stunned. Be stunned. Stun somebody. And uh, yeah, amen, Sister Shakti. Amen, amen, amen. Can't believe you missed another one. So <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. It'll be here on the replay. All right, for now, everybody, this is Jason Meyer signing off. This is um, Tuesday morning. We'll have Sketch Club tonight at 7 o'clock on Facebook. Go do some beautiful things today, people. Love you guys. Bye-bye.